David, thank you very much. On behalf, on behalf of the musicians in the orchestra, we welcome you to your own show. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. I'm very nice to see you, sir. I'm very excited about tonight's program. Are you? Why is that, sir? Because of a surprise. There's a surprise That's tonight? Right. You wouldn't think that as long as we've been on the air that there would be many surprises we could have on this show. I would think we have done everything in the yeah, past No, no, no. We have a little surprise tonight, and I'm very excited about it. Is it a girl? <sighs> no. Well, no. I'm not going to say anything because okay. it's a wonderful surprise. When, is it, when are we going to see this well, did, did the scene? No, no. Now you're going to ruin the surprise. Okay. All yeah. right. I won't mention it anymore. You know, let me ask you a question, Paul. You live in a, an apartment, probably. Yes, I do. A and you have plumbing. Uh, you have uh, like a shower. You like, have like a bathtub. You have like Check. a kitchen sink. You have like a bathroom yes. sink. Yes. All right. What's the most common complaint about plumbing that you might have here in New York City? Drippy faucet. All right. What would be the second most common complaint? Uh, rust coming out of the... All right. The third off. most common complaint what you is have. It? What is it? <laughs> no hot water. Ah, that's of course. Yeah. See? Always. Yeah. So let's that would move be the that most to, common. Move it right to the top of the okay, list. Okay, yeah. Most okay. common complaint would be no hot water. Yeah. Now, my faucet, my plumbing, and my bathroom here at NBC, just the opposite. I have no cold water. No cold water. <laughs> I can't get just cold hot. water. That's right. For the last three days, you turn on the hot, there it is. It's like that joke. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that is. You turn on the, the left thing, and you get plenty of hot water. Steam and hot water comes right out of there, and you can shave, shower, whatever the hell you want to do. You turn on the right, you know, like you're going to rinse your teeth when you're brushing or something. It's just as hot as the one on the left. I've scalded my gums several times. Let me ask you this. Do you wash your hair in that hot water? Well, in, a, in the shower, you can kind of modulate it. You want it to be I warm see. in the shower. That'll frizz your hair right up, you know. <laughs> hot water. Yes, yes, yes. And don't some of us wish we had hair to frizz? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, really, bravo for that. <laughs> really, that was Yes, sir, what a cheap oh. shot. You know, look at this skyline. This is interesting. How can you get a nice tight shot of one of the, this building right here in front? This is a brand new sky. And look, for the summer, these people have put out their little patio furniture. Isn't that nice? They have their, they have their shrubs. Can you, oh, there, can you get? And then they have their table, and then they have their chair and stuff like that. That's kind of cute. And wait a minute. Oh, Hal, take another shot of that. There's somebody out there on the roof now. Who is that? Get a look at that. Can you? That, that would be, uh, Paul, how you doing? It's me, Dave. Can you see me? Paul. Yeah, there, yeah, that's cute. It is. It, it's gone nuts tonight, hasn't it? It is. A little. Yeah. It's that hot that's, water. Wash it has it. a mind of its own. Uh, what do we... Oh, oh, oh. Maybe now it's time for the surprise. Oh, great. <laughs> what is the surprise? Well, let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, hang on to something. Get ready for big-time TV fun. It's time once again for another Hal Gurney's Network Time Killers. Hal? Hi, Dave. Hi, Hal. How you doing? Fine, Dave. How's the summer going? Uh, terrific. What so you, far, just great. Wh what do you do to keep cool? Well, just hang out here in, uh, in, the, in the control room, that's all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good idea. Yeah. All right, Hal, yeah. what do you have planned for us tonight on your big network time killer? Let me ask you, Dave. Yeah. Do you like dominoes? Do I like dominoes? Lord God in heaven above, you know I do more than anything. Right. Well, then uh, you're going to get a kick out of this. There's okay. something I call wow. Giant domino dominoes. Wow, giant dominoes. dominoes yeah. yeah, and Dave, I'm going to need your help. Take okay. care. Yeah, yeah. What do I do? Just go out in the hall. Go out in the hall. And it'll be obvious what you have to do. Okay. Wow, giant dominoes. Here we go. I'll be right back, folks. Pardon me. Move it, Dave. Oh, man. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Wow, giant dominoes. Good Lord, look at these giant dominoes. Stand by. Stand by, Dave. All right, here I am. Okay, Irma, Are we ready? Yep. Are we Kill all set? Cue him, Irma. Okay, here we go. Wow, giant dominoes. So can we see it again? I, I didn't get to see it, Hal. I, me and my hair were out in the hallway. There we go. Oh, man. Oh, Sam Peckinpah.
They, they, don't, they don't have that on this week with David Brinkley. No, you're not going to see that there. That was... <sighs> Let's do our top ten list and then begin the program. See, that was a little surprise. What did that you think? That was a great surprise. Cute, eh? Uh, here we go. Tonight's Just category, like... top ten other campaign promises George Bush has broken. <laughs> You know, now, Paul, it looks like they may be new taxes. So I understand. Or at least trying to squeeze more revenue out of the existing tax program. You said the T word. Yeah, right? that's right. In, yeah. in the campaign, of course, it was read my lips, no new taxes. Here we yeah, go. Top 10 word. other campaign promises Bush may have broken. Uh, number 10, a birthday joyride on stealth bomber for every U.S. citizen. See, there you go. Uh, number 9, go 10 rounds with Dukakis at Trump Plaza. Number 8. To eat his own weight in birdseed twice a day. Number seven, add mechanical shark attraction to White House tour. Well, that fell through. Number six, a pony for quail. Number five. Number five, add golden girls to Mount Rushmore. Number four, uh, to introduce a Brazilian dance craze with real staying power. Uh, number three, provide big name guests fresh new comedy every night. Oh, I, I'm sorry, that's a, that's a promise that I have broken. <laughs> I don't know how that got in there. Uh, uh, number two, that NBC's Baywatch would stay on the air forever. And the number one uh, campaign promise George Bush has broken, nude Elvis postage stamp. Well, uh... on the big program tonight, ladies and gentlemen, from Murphy Brown, Robert Pastorelli, Johnny Clegg, and Savuka from South Africa, and also noted columnist George Will. So watch the commercial and then come on back. What are you, what are you uh, up to for the rest of the summer? The rest of the summer, um, I was looping the, going back to loop the Kevin Costner movie uh, I that I did that was filmed Dances with Wolves. some voice work in there? The film I did, Dances with Wolves. Yeah. Uh, he told me that, to say hi to you. Oh, he did not. Yeah, he did. He's good. He's, <laughs> I won't tell him he says it will get along well because Kevin doesn't suffer fools graciously. He says, tell David we should get along oh, well. But he was on the show, right? Yeah, yeah. He was a very nice guy yeah. also. Oh, All right, now, good. you want to go out and push the dominoes? Yeah. Okay, here, I'll just point you in the direction. The direction. Head out here, hurry. Thank you. You just go down there, go down there, hurry, all the way down, make a left turn, we'll let you know. Hurry. Harry's gonna go out there and uh, push the giant dominoes. Oh, all right. That's a long haul, isn't it? <laughs> Stop! He's got my wallet! All right, you ready? Go ahead, Hal. Cue him whenever you're ready. Here we go. The giant dominoes. Oh, man. not a bull, she's a bullfighter. I understand that. Also on the uh, program, Catherine O'Hara mm -hmm. is here. <laughs> is, is this where they do Phantom in here? Um, also on the program, a very funny young man, Mr. Jeff Altman. That's on the show tonight. So now, I'll say hello to our friend, Beth Sussman. Good, nice to see you. Thank you very much. Had a pleasure to have you. Thank you for joining us again this evening. Will, as always, nice to have you. Antoine, nice to see you. This, huh, Santa? This is uh, now. This is uh, Bet uh, Sussman. She's filling in tonight because because Paul uh, is not here tonight. But Paul will be back tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Paul will be back tomorrow night, and we're we'll be happy to have Paul. Morty, how are we doing with the big show? Uh, we're going to do. Uh... The quiz. Okay, you know, ladies and gentlemen, something now is transpiring. That, that, this is the very nature of this program. Right up to the last minute, things are being formed to show you a little bit later. Things are developing right now. Is that correct, Morty? That's right. 
something, and is it going to be a delightful surprise? It'll be a delightful surprise if the tests work. Oh, oh, we're, we're doing the testing right now? We're experimenting. Oh, man. Oh, there. Oh. <laughs> Well, well now, we're, no, it's no longer, it's no longer a surprise anymore. <laughs> Morty. <laughs> well, the tests worked. Yeah, the tests were. Oh, the tests did work? I guess so. But there's no surprise to it now. No. Oh, brother. Can, I don't know what that thing is. You, you have no idea what that is? You folks, did you know what you're looking at there? No. Yeah, but you, you thought that was a spider, remember? <laughs> okay, all right, so they don't know what it is. So a little bit later, maybe we'll see this. Yes, sir. Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm, I'm, only, I'm only sorry Paul isn't here to see this tonight. But Paul will be back tomorrow, and that's, that's Bet Sussman. You know, very odd, very odd. So I'm driving to work this morning. And oh, by the way, by the way, the West Side Highway is gone. Forget about it. Did you hear about this? Yeah, that's right. Somebody set fire to the West Side Highway. It's gone. Now, I find out about this en route to, to work this morning. You hear on the, the little report to come in, the, the helicopter traffic report. By the way, the West Side Highway is gone. It's on fire. It burned down. It's out of here. So I'm taking a different route to work, and as a result, I was like an hour late. And I'm coming down Broadway, and I get to about uh, Broadway and 53rd Street. And, and I'm, I'm stopped because of the light and people are crossing in the crosswalk. Millions of people back and forth, all kinds of people, men, women, young, old, big, small, large, whatever. And finally, I see like three adult people who, who look to me like they're Japanese. A man, two, two men, and, and an, an adult woman. And they're all carrying golf bags across the, right there at 53rd and Broadway. Inner city golf game. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what? It's what? Morty, is it ready? So they tell me. Well, you tell me. You tell me. Should we do it? Because look, ladies Let's and gentlemen, we could do this or we could do the little Morty thing. Well, oh. Let me, get a, let me get a beverage here to steal my nerves because I don't, I don't want to screw this up. Mm. Okay, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as that unmistakable music tells us once again, yes, it's time for another Hal Gurney Network Time Killer. <laughs> Hi, Dave. How are you, Hal? Good. Dave, tonight. Wait a minute, Hal. How's your yeah. summer? It's been pretty rotten so far, Dave. Oh, yeah. The humidity. Tonight. Yeah, the humidity just takes it yeah. right out of you, doesn't I, it, Hal? I don't mind the heat. It's the humidity that yeah. kills you yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, Well, so, tonight, Dave, yeah. uh, I thought it would be an educational and entertaining to see a big rubber in raft inflated inside an NBC elevator. Do you want to see that now? Well, now, wait a minute. Let, let's get this straight, Hal. It's going to be a let's large inflatable again. raft. Right. Inside. Is it like a six-man raft, an eight-man raft? It's a six-man raft. Okay, inflated in an NBC elevator. That's right. Oh, man. You want to see it now? God bless you, Hal okay. Gurney. All right. <laughs> yes, Thanks, let's take a look at it take now. Five. Here we go. Out there are the elevators. There's our own Biff Henderson. Are you ready, Biff? Yeah, Dave. Okay. Just let me, there are a few people inside the elevator. Let get me get them, them out. Get out of there. Get, please, whoever you are, you people. Come on out. Run, get out and run for your lives. There's giant metallic spiders in here. All right, Biff. Here I go. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh! Wait a minute. That was it? That was it? That was the successful test? You guys looked at that and said, yep, that's a go. Let's fly this one. <laughs> We're going to Mars. <laughs> Top off the tanks. We're leaving tonight. That was a successful test. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, honey, do you have a little something for me? Bring it right in. Thank you very much. It was supposed to just fill up the damn elevator and then literally choke the life out of the building. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's do our top ten list and then go home. It's too hot to do a show. Uh, the category tonight, Top 10 Ways McDonald's is now more, th more health conscious. You know, I mentioned that they're no longer cooking with beef fat. Where's Paul? What have you done with him? Seriously, where, where is my little friend Paul? Uh, top 10 Ways McDonald's is now more health conscious. E e here we go. Number 10, Ronald McDonald no longer sleeps, uh, spends nights sleeping in salad bar. No longer 
sleeping pillow bar. Uh, number nine, Happy Meals no longer include a pack of Luckies. Uh, number eight, when out of Shamrock Shakes, uh, will no longer substitute mop water. Number seven, uh, decorative bowls of mercury removed from tables. Number six, uh, from now on, counter person will ask, would you like the name of a good heart specialist with that? Uh, number five, uh, 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 discontinuing, find a rusty nail in your Big Mac promotional game. Number four, new combination salad dressing sunblock. Number three, uh, employees must wash hands after patting down choking victims for wallet and jewelry. Uh, number two, Mayor McCheese excused from duty at Fry Machine due to wet hacking cough. And the number one way McDonald's is now more health conscious, decided to drop pork sickles. There you go. Yes, that was a successful test. Do we have that on videotape? Let's see it in slow motion. Can we do that? Do we have time to do that, Morty? Okay, here. I think it. Wow. Even, even more pathetic in slow motion. Look at, look at the way it just continues to swell and, and, man, this is like watching a guy unpack his luggage is what this is. <laughs> well, there you go. Let's do a commercial. We'll be right back here with Jeff Walton. I sound any better tonight? Unbelievable. Yeah, well, you did earlier in the day. Yeah. But that crazy Andy Divine voice yeah. is coming back. Gene! Now. Gene! Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't, How I don't, are you I don't. Feeling? I feel great. I feel like a million dollars. I have the strength of 10 men, as you know. It's just that I, my voice is gone. I sound a little like Kathy Lee, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> well, sort of like Kathy Lee. Yeah, but it's fine. I don't have a sore throat. I don't, mm. I don't, I don't, I don't have a cold well, necessarily. Good. I just, I'm a little squeaky. Glad you're feeling fine. Yeah, I just feel great. I couldn't feel better. Uh, welcome to the big program. This should be fun here tonight, don't you think? Yes, it gonna should. Going to build bookshelves. In, in a couple of minutes, we're going to write here. You know, Bob has got the wood and we're going to be making bookshelves. You know how I love that building stuff. Crazy. <laughs> do, you, do you own any tools at your house? Yes, I do. I have a complete toolbox in my house. Oh, you do not. I do. What's in the toolbox? Phillips screwdriver. Right. Flathead screwdriver. Mm -hmm. Pliers? Pliers, what kind? Needle nose? Uh, no. Yeah. Regular pliers. You have a hammer? I have a hammer, yes. Do you have a claw well, hammer? Well, if I had a hammer. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely hammer in the morning. Thank do, you. Do you, do you have uh, any kind of snips, any kind of insulation strippers? I don't use uh -huh. that kind of language in my house. <laughs> uh, uh, nails? Do you have an assortment of nails I've and screws? I've got some nails, yeah. Nuts and bolts? Why are you asking me all I'm just, stuff? I'm curious. I can't imagine you, you on a stuff? Saturday, you put on your little outfit, your little apron, <laughs> And then, and then you get out your toolbox and you go around looking for things and, and you complete a little task and then you check it off. I have a question, by the way. Yeah, go right ahead. When Pete Rose checks in, are his incidentals <laughs> covered or does he have to show a credit card? No, no, and, and the beverages are not complimentary. Ah. That bar there in the room, you have to pay for those beverages. The mini bar, yeah, they check it every day, yeah. Hey, you know, you kids are here on a really great night because, as that music tells us once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another Hal Gurney Network Time Killer. Hal? <laughs> There's Hal Gurney right there, our, our yeah. director. Hi, Hal. How's it going? Fine, Dave. How's your summer? Uh, terrific. Hal, you Hal what's, the one tool, what's the one tool every man should have in his toolbox? A, um, well, a 16-ounce hammer, I would say. A 16-ounce hammer? Yeah, And right. what, what about a and roll, a, a roll a of mints? Roll of mints and a flat bar. Don't forget the flat, flat bar. Flat bar. Get yourself yeah. a flat bar, uh, Bob. It, 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 what is it, a flat bar? Uh, we'll find out from Bob yeah. when Bob okay. gets out here. Okay. Al, what do you have for us tonight? Tonight, Dave, I have a little presentation based on a recurring dream of mine. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, people are laughing. Uh, it's, it's three world-class supermodels busting plates. Oh, Okay, my. girls. Paul, Three world-class supermodels yeah. busting plates. Be very careful. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very 
much. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Well, well, now, now we know why uh, Hal needs the flat bar. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. Uh, tonight's top ten category from uh, the home office in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, top ten thoughts of motorists here in the tri-state area. You understand this, Paul? Lebanon? Lebanon. These would be, these would be the thoughts of motorists in the tri-state area. These are the top ten thoughts. Top ten thoughts. We have them right here. We Any got this motors? from the DMV. That's right. No, no. Motors in the tri-state area. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> and these would be their top ten thoughts as they drive. Yeah. This, this looks like something you'd find if, you, if the police were uh, summoned to Wendell's house on a yeah. Friday night. <laughs> what the hell's going on in here? Top ten thoughts of tri-state motorists. Here we go. Number ten. What are you looking at? <laughs> Number nine. Number nine, Greyhound thinks I have a license. <laughs> Number eight, you guys aren't from America's most wanted, are you? Number seven, I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> Number six, when you're a Northwest pilot, life is a nonstop party. Number five, number five, I'm cleaning my oven. <laughs> number four, are those Bugle Boy jeans? Uh, number three, number three, hey, hey, that's my car. Number two, number two. That's right, pal, it's a Cadillac. <laughs> Look at this guy, he's got a butt going, Paul. Yeah. Uh, and the number one thoughts, uh, number one thought of motorists, one day you're the Emir of Kuwait, the next you're delivering pizza. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready, uh, get, a, get a hold of something, get a hold of yourselves, phone the neighbors, wake the kids, because in a matter of minutes, like two minutes, two minutes from now, TV carpenter Bob Vila and I will be making bookshelves. Please, please come on back. announcement to make you yeah. haven't even heard this yet right. okay i'm going to be taking a leave of absence from the show right to pursue a more aggressive approach to having a baby <laughs> thank you very much oh, good congratulations paul and good luck now paul you've been here nine years has my hair looked dumber ever uh, before than it does now yeah has, you should see some of those tapes from the yeah, first yeah, season yeah i know I this know. is an interestingly dumb though yeah it's something odd here i guess i'll just have to get it cut sooner or later Huh? Do what, sir? That's right. It is. This is a very astute man. Mm -hmm. Meteorologically attuned. It is the humidity. So there you go. Uh, you folks are here on a good night. We've lined up for you another one of Hal Gurney's famous network time killers. Hal, are you there? Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, our director. Hi, Hal. How are you? Fine, Dave. How are you tonight? How was your summer? It was terrific. Yeah? How was your vacation? I had a marvelous time. Two yeah. weeks in uh, England and Ireland. Oh, well, I'd love to hear about it sometime. Yeah. Well, after the show, maybe. What are you uh, doing? Okay. Hal, Hal, you know, we, we have a, a visitor in the audience from London. We do? Yeah. Can we get a shot of them? Well, yeah, they're back up there someplace. Take, take, yeah. Where? Can we find her? Take is she there? Take, yeah. There Ra she is over there. Raise your hand, yeah. please. Yeah, there she is. Okay. Uh, uh. Uh, take two. Thank you. All right, sit down, ma'am. There are no prizes. All right, Hal, what, what have you planned for us Thanks tonight for on your big network time killer? Tonight, Dave, it's my tribute to the U.S. Open. Take it away, oh, boys. Oh, it's Hal Gurney's Good tribute job. to the U.S. Open. Well, this will certainly be something very exciting.
right, thank you very much. Looks like some kind of water ox swatting at gnats. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dave, are we... Are you going to make us go back to the schedule of where we do Wednesday matinee, Saturday matinee? Yeah, we're thinking of installing uh, an afternoon show on Wednesday. So uh, if you're holding tickets for a Wednesday show, we may do an early one. That would be at, like, 1. Yeah, we do a We'll do an early show at 1, so you can come. You can still have lunch and then enjoy the fine show and then do your shopping and then get the hell out of town. That's right. <laughs> and then, of course, we'd do the evening show. We'd move the evening show that night to 7. I see. We move it, we move it back. <laughs> yeah. What are we going to do in between shows? That's always such a, a drag. Just go up to the Rainbow Room and drink. All right. <laughs> Did, did you have a nice uh, weekend? Yeah, I did. I, well, you know what I did? I flew to Cleveland and, uh, and I introduced the, this year's inductees. Wait a minute, this the is Rock and Roll Hall of Fame stuff? Yeah, I Have introduced... they actually broken ground for the Rock and Roll uh, Hall of Fame? No, not yet. <laughs> but they're sure they want it in Cleveland we're, there? Yes, and we're confident that we're going we're gonna to see it built in Cleveland. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Because the Cleveland sound has been so instrumental in well... rock and roll music. <laughs> I'm not sure let's, why. Let's hear a little of that Cleveland sound. Cleveland that sound. Here it goes. A little bit. Yeah. Now, I don't so, know why. No wonder those folks would get the Rock and Roll Hall yeah. of Fame. And, and so, who, who are the uh, inductees oh, this year? Uh, I, I don't have them written down, but it's a lot of people. The you impressions. fly all the way to Cleveland well, and you I don't... can name them by heart. Oh, yeah, name them by heart. The impressions. Yeah. Uh, John Lee Hooker. Right. Howlin' Wolf. Jimmy Reed. Ike and Tina Turner. Wow. Uh, the Birds. Now, do you think Ike will actually be there? Do you think well, Ike I th will show up for the I dinner? I think Ike uh, may be detained, as oh, a matter of fact. Really? <laughs> We're not exactly sure about that. Away on other business for Anyway, Ike. that's what I did on my weekend. What did you do this weekend? I had a lovely yourself? weekend. You know, I don't know. I, the simple things in life are the things that charm me the most. There's this, uh, where I live, this town where I live, uh, there's this video store. And every uh, Saturday and Sunday, families go in there to rent the video. So yeah. I, I walked in there, and uh, I kind of waited around, and finally somebody said, may I help you? And I said sort of loudly, and as a dumb guy, I said, yes. yeah, you, you got ghost dad? <laughs> And, oh, man, I'm telling you, we laughed, we laughed till our, till our sides hurt over that one. They get your dumb guy yeah, character yeah, in there. Yeah, they all enjoy it. We, the yeah, they but I'm telling it. you, I don't know why I go in there anymore, because uh, there's nothing ever in there I really want to see, and, no. and, I, and I don't own a VCR, so I gotta... <laughs> Can't figure out why you would walk in there. That hey, you know, you sense. came on a good night, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for another one of Hal Gurney's Network Time Killers. Hal, are you in there? Hal Gurney, our director, and has been for the last 45 years. Hal Gurney and his uh, network time killers. Hi. Hi, Hal. How you doing? Dave, hi. How was your weekend? Terrific, Dave. Uh, uh, good. What do you have for us tonight, well, Hal? Well, tell me, how do you feel about Polynesian dance numbers, Dave? I'm sorry, Hal, how do I feel about what? Polynesian dance numbers. Hal, you know, as God Almighty is my witness in heaven above, I enjoy Polynesian dance numbers as much as the next guy. Terrific. Then I think you're going to enjoy this. From South Pacific Excuse Review... Me, one, one second, Hal. Can yes, I interrupt you a second? Is that Patty Hearst behind you? <laughs> Hi, Patty. Nice to see you. <laughs> I don't think so, Dave, but okay, I'll look well, into it. In yeah, case you wanted right. to notify the authorities, I thought okay. perhaps that was her. No, I don't think so. Right. Okay. Back to the card. Yeah, uh, here we go. Oh, all right, Kate. From the South Pacific Review in Lando Lakes, Florida, uh -huh. here we get Tariva Sidone... And what's and a Samoan fire dance? Oh, Samoan fire. That is unbelievable. That, to me, is unbelievable. Two nights ago, three nights ago in Las Vegas, he knocks out Buster Douglas. And tonight, ah. he's here with the fire batons. That's and That's not the, that. That's not the same. The fair they are again. Oh, my God, they're back. Get 
get some black flag for the skirts. Now, you know, uh, Paul, we a little dialing music, if you don't mind. A little dialing music. We're calling across the street to our good friend uh, Meg Parsant. Hal, do me a favor. Turn on the external camera, if you will. And uh, we're calling over there at uh, Simon & Schuster. There is uh, the 14th floor. Look how nice. It's dark out now because... Did you change your clocks, by the way? Yes, of course I did. Yeah. I get confused. I changed all my light bulbs. <laughs> You change know, them ahead or behind. No, I want to tell you something. Uh, every time I do this, you, you, when you change your light bulbs, for some reason, I don't know if light bulbs are cheaper than they used to be, yeah. but mine always bust off in the socket. As you're unscrewing them. Yeah, when, when the thing goes dead and you think, oh, I have to change the bulb, you get up in there, and then the bulb part itself will break out of the little yeah. screw thing. The worst. Yeah, and then, and then you have to put on the rubber boots, you have to go downstairs, <laughs> you have to find the circuit breaker, you yeah. have to kill the circuit breaker, and then you have to go back up there to back extricate the, the, the rest of the light bulb. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder, I'm asking myself, geez, could they possibly be making light bulbs cheaper these days? A little bit days? cheaper. No. 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 <sighs> I'm glad you wear those rubber boots down to the base. Well, you have to be grounded. No, no, it's because of, so I don't want to complete the electrical circuit. That's right. You're I'm insulating myself. You're insulating yourself, yes. Yeah. I try to do that a lot myself. Have too. you ever changed a light bulb in your life? Of course I have. Here I we have go. A, a step ladder at home. Dialing music, please. Okay, there she is. Oh, there's, there's the lovely Meg. But look at those people hanging around out there. They know something's up. Look at those ne'er-do-wells, those uh, pinheads, those uh, executive uh, blowhards, those... Hey, hey, Meg, it's me, Dave. How you doing? Hey, uh, wave to everybody in America. There's lovely Meg Parson. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what are we doing now? Hey, you know, they canceled that, uh, Hull High. You ever see that on yeah, NBC? Yeah, I, I didn't get to see it. I blinked. Yeah, it it's, was it's like the first NBC show and it's gone. Gone, yeah. yeah. Do you know oh, what the deal on the show was? What was it about? As I understand it, Hal, turn on the external camera. Are those guys over there yet? The Okay. All right, get in there. Is, is this... Would, would there be a better reason to call 911? <laughs> um, all right, now, do I phone Meg up? Yeah. All right, now, let me call her up there uh, and see if we can... Now, are they going to be able to set fire to their torches over there? All right. Yeah, so they canceled that Hull High, and you know what it is, Paul? It's, it's like cop rock. Everybody was uh, singing, except every class in the high school was aerobics. <laughs> uh, Meg's talking to them, trying to get them to listen to reason. Hello? Hello? Oh, God. Oh, my God, she's changed her number. Why, why, why can't I dial seven silly numbers? Six, seven. Did I do something wrong dialing? All right, here we go. How are we doing on time? We're going to... All right. Oh, man. Just get it through here. Come on. Hello? You know, I could just go upstairs and scream across yeah, there. She... Hello? Okay. One more time. I may be going to MCI. Hello, publicity. Oh, thank God, Meg, you're all right. Thank yeah. God you're all right. Uh, okay, you, you know what these guys are going to do, don't you? Well, I have a feeling they're going to do some dancing. Yeah, they're going to do some dancing, and they're going to turn. They're going to set fire to their torches. How, how, how are you guys getting along, by the way? Very well. They're very nice. Does, does it does it smell like poi over there? Um, a little bit. <laughs> I wouldn't know the smell, yeah, but yeah. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> Meg, all you have to do, I guess, is is uh, turn off the lights and run for your life. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll don't don't them. hang up. I want to hear what this sounds like. Okay. All right, Paul. We have a little music from you. We'll supply the music over there. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, turn off the light. Oh, there okay. we go. Oh, it's my favorite part of the show. Here we go, across the hall. They're lighting up now. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's it? Okay. That's, that's all? Yeah, that's it. Okay. That, <laughs> wow. Okay, that's funny. Man, man. Meg. Yes. What was that? <laughs> Man, I, I don't know, I don't know, Meg, if you can see it over there, but here it was spectacular. It's pretty spectacular right here, too. It, it looks like road flares. I, now, now, wait a minute. Aren't, aren't, they, aren't they supposed to be dancing around and stuff? Well, you want them to dance around even more? They want to...
to make sure they could be seen. W were they actually dancing around? Yeah, they're, well, they're wiggling around a lot. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I want to see that. <laughs> Uh, but we, we wanted to see him, like, twirl in the fire and that kind of crap. Oh, it's such a small office. I'll see. Can you guys twirl or do anything <laughs> She's like that? She's talking to the Polynesian dancers <laughs> now. Yeah, here we go. This will be... Oh, that's much better. That's perfect. Wait, wait. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Max. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm very embarrassed because that was my idea. I thought it'd be fun to see him over there dancing around. And yeah. It's just... Okay, like guys waiting for a bus. Well, <laughs> like, like miners waiting to be rescued. Well, the best laid plans. Uh, what are we doing? Let's do a commercial. What the hell? Let's do one of those. Commercials. <laughs> and uh, in addition to that, with Paul and the band, kids, look. Texas Tornadoes. There yeah! they are. I don't know. Whoa. David, are you, are you familiar with the musical phenomenon known as Tex-Mex? Yes, I am, Paul. And well, are, are you familiar with the phenomenon of a full-length mirror? Well... <laughs> Of course, of course, of course, it was only a joke. Hi, man. Nice to see you. What are you saying? Course, I look nice a little, a little Alex. crazy. Oh, you in look this great. Outfit. That's you. That's I'm wearing you. this outfit. Yeah. Where, where's me. Howdy? I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm wearing this outfit for a specific reason because yeah. we have a group here, the Texas Tornadoes, and they're sitting in with us for the entire evening, and right. they are four of the prime proponents of the Tex-Mex sound. Here Each of them okay. a star Call in his them own out right. right now. Let me start in the front on the left. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Freddie Fender. Freddie, is nice with to us see you. How are you? On guitar. In the back, on the accordion, the number one Tex Mex accordionist in the world, Flaco Jimenez on the accordion. Flaco Jimenez. Nice to see you. Flaco, how are you? On the far right in the back, if you can get to him, on the Vox Continental Organ, this is the guy who played organ on all the great Tex-Mex records, and you're going to hear some of his stuff later on. It's the great Augie Myers on the organ. I, I thought that might be Augie. And in the middle of those two, I don't know if you remember a little record called She's About a Mover, a record called Mendocino, a record called When the Rains Came. This is Sir Douglas of the, of the Sir Douglas Quintet, Mr. Doug Som, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. How are you? He's going to be with us all week long. He's not with the Texas Tornadoes, but he's a nutty guy. Francisco Centano, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Okay. If I can just take a second here, I'd like to do, introduce every member of the audience here. Let's just uh, Very funny. Very funny. <laughs> Very funny. I'm having the time of my life over here. Yeah, and you're, and you, you're you look great, audience. and they sound great. They're gonna, yeah, they're, yeah. they're terrific. Well, Freddie Fender has one of the great voices in all of music, doesn't Absolutely he? Absolutely yeah. correct, and we're happy to have him with us tonight. Uh, what the hell are we doing here? Uh, oh, 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 this is a great night. Not only is it going to be good for the music, and we're in the middle of the holidays. Kids, it's time for another one of Hal Gurney's Holiday Network Time Killers. Hal? Hal, here's our director, Hal uh, Gurney. Hi, Dave. Hi, uh, hi, Hal. What do you have for us tonight? Well, first of all, Dave, happy holidays. Thank to you, you very much. And your loved ones. Hal, did you meet uh, Texas Tornadoes? I met them all. Okay. The third time, Dave. <laughs> They're actually a nice bunch of guys. Yeah. What do you have for us tonight, Hal? Uh, well... Uh, tonight, Dave, a staging of Tchaikovsky's beloved holiday classic, The Nutcracker. You oh, know it. You know it very well. The Nutcracker. Well. Sure. Yeah. And, yeah. and doing it is our own floor crew and stagehands. Oh, Boys, The Nutcracker with our floor, floor crew and stagehands. This will be very nice for the holiday. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hal, 
Al, turn on the external camera, will you please? Al Gurney, also known as Ernie Gurney. <laughs> Uh, this is up on the 14th floor. This is looking across the street. That's 49th Street. Open the blinds, please, kids. All right. Oh, very nice. <laughs> and uh, this woman is working in the uh, Briggs & Stratton building, immediately south of us here on 6th Avenue. Her name is uh, Meg Parsant. She works for uh, Pocket Books, a division of the Simon & Schuster Publishing Company. Look at this woman's hair, Paul. Doesn't she truly? Yeah, she has lovely, lovely looking hair. I'm going to call over there, and we're going to see if we can't... Uh, Get Meg to help us with a little something here. Here we go. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, I hope I have not misdialed. That will be Meg Parsant. We met her about a year ago, I think, or eight months ago. She's working late, as she always does. There, going for the phone, picks it up, and now Hello, saying... Hi, Meg, it's me, Dave, over here at NBC. Hi. How you doing? Turn around and wave to America. Great blues master John Lee Hooker a little later on in the program, but Mr. Robert Cray has joined us early. Say hello. Oh, nice I don't think any of us realized he was a member of the French Navy, but God bless you, Robert. <laughs> we appreciate it. So you're saying then Whoa. that if, if we are if we are on at all tonight, that's right. Things couldn't have gotten too ugly and awful. That's what I'm far. thinking. Yeah, I think if we're on now, if we're on at all. Everything must be at least temporarily okay. Yeah. and we would we would hope that, wouldn't we? We we certainly and, would. And because you folks have stayed up, probably had to hire a sitter for the kids and are watching later than you normally would be watching tonight, we've planned a little something extra special, or as we say in Indiana, extra spatial. <laughs> It's time, ladies and gentlemen, and this is a good one, believe me. It's another one of our Hal Gurney Network Time Killers. Here's the director, uh, Ernie Gurney. Hal, uh, here we go. Just let you see this. Hi, Dave. Hi there, Hal. Hi, Dave. How you doing? Fine. How was your weekend? It was terrific, Dave. Yeah? One of the best I've ever had. Congratulations. Yeah. Hal, what have yeah. you planned for us tonight on this very, very important special evening? Well, Dave, how do you feel about hula hoops? Hula hoops? Oh, my God, Hal, you know that there is no man who loves hula hoops with any greater passion or fervor than me. Yeah. Well, then, tonight you're going to enjoy this. Uh -huh. From the Moscow Circus, hula hoop artist, Tanya Kasiva. Oh, my God, it's a and hula hoop artist. <laughs> If you want to stay in the country, I can help with the paperwork. <laughs> wow. Hula hoop artist. Yeah. Man, she's lovely, isn't Take she? That, yeah. Now you're talking. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> there she is. We see her. Hey, Hal, do you have any more of that? Can we see Can we see a little something else from the hula hoop artist? Music, please. Here we go. More. I heard Wendell trying to convince her he was a representative from Whammo. Well, <laughs> he was trying to right. get her a deal. Yeah, well, I can, you know, sure, the autograph model, of course. Get her an endorsement. She's lovely, isn't she? Now Boy, we've, we've had some Russian uh, Russian women on the show. We had Miss Russia, Miss Moscow, Miss Russian Miss Television. Miss Russian TV. Lovely, lovely young women, and another beautiful, handsome. She's girl. great. Yeah, speaks uh, very good English, I might say. Yeah. How you feel? I feel good. You I got to say weekend? one thing. Right, I said that? this before the show, and I mean it. If there's a war, I'm going back to red meat. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Whatever. Sure. Why not? That's all I can say. Are you relaxed? Yeah, I feel fine. Yeah. In good shape. Yeah. Well rested. Good. Yeah. Okay. Hal, put up the clock. 
<clears throat> you have 45 seconds. Okay. Here we go. The only North American marsupial. Uh, the possum. Yes. Floating waste product of molten steel. Uh, slag. Correct. Scientific name for the so-called northern lights. The aurora borealis. Yes. <laughs> Stupidest member of the band. Uh, Willie. Yes. <laughs> the three rivers that converge in Pittsburgh. Uh, it's the Ohio, uh, the, the Monongahela, and the Allegheny. Yes. He's considered the father of, moder of driver's education. Russell Collingsworth. Yes. Uh, the county seat of Butler County, Alabama. That is Titusville. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Greenville. Uh, He's considered the son of the father of modern uh, driver's Russell education. Russell Collingsworth, Jr. Yes, absolutely. The way Ethel Merman sings. We'll be swell, we'll be great. The names of the two the CIA one. operatives in villainous uh, Latvia. Jan Hovar and journalist James Dawson. Yeah, Danny Schindler, the president. Oh, let's give it to him. The corner, no, we'll give it to him. Just give it to me. Right. I got that one. Nice going. Nice job. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. What about the hoops girl? Is she here? Is she... <laughs> what are we doing now? What's on the agenda now? We're doing a commercial? Oh, and then can we see the, uh, the hoops lady? Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, actually, if you're up watching, it's like four in the morning now. That's right. <laughs> so what the hell? Exactly, what the hell? Who would care if we did another commercial right now or just brought out the hoops lady Good one point. more Screw time? It. No more commercial. We won't do this commercial, Morty. Because it's too late now. This commercial is airing so late, it can't possibly be worth anything. Let's do the right, bring it. How? Bring out your little Russian friend. Hooker and uh, Robert Trey out in a couple of minutes. Actress Diane Cannon, lovely woman, vivacious, oh, she's woman. Great. talented Boy. actress. Oh, <laughs> Join us uh, tomorrow. John Hurt will be here. Baltimore Colt uh, Art Donovan, former Baltimore Colt and uh, some science guy. Morty, this is a rerun tomorrow, isn't it? No. We've done this damn show before. No. These three people were on one show we did like three years ago. No. Yes, no. it is. We've done this show. No. We're now starting to repeat live no. shows we've taped already. <laughs> Yes, we are. This show has been taped at least once, maybe twice. All new material. Oh, oh, I understand. <laughs> All new material, ladies and gentlemen. You know, speaking of that, I'm watching the American Gladiators over the weekend. <laughs> and they showed the audience. Guess who's in the audience? I have no idea. Meryl Streep. You're kidding. I was stunned. I'm stunned. I'm sitting at home and I'm seeing, wow, there's Meryl She's Streep. She's a fan of Apparently, that stuff. Yes, they pointed out, Mike Adamley, your host, your congenial host, uh -huh. likable young newcomer, Mike Adamley. I see, yeah. Pointed out that Meryl Streep see? is, in fact, a fan. Wow. And you didn't know she could sing either. <laughs> what? You didn't know she could sing either, and now you know she can yeah, sing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. she loves the American Gladiator. Hey, you know who's right around here? Hal is the uh, hula hoop lady here from Russia. Is she right over there? Is she right over there? Is she right over there? Where is she? Is she right, is she right over there? Where is she? nice woman. I'm chatting with her during the commercial, and we're getting along pretty well. And she, oh. she finally, she says to me, where, where do you keep the missiles? <laughs> hey, I got your missiles. We got your missiles. Hey. Thank you. Um, what are we doing, huh? 
No, let's do a commercial. Can we do a commercial? Do we have time or not? What? Let's do a commercial and then we'll be uh, right back to that. coming up uh, we should we showed the uh, the picture on the cover that's a great picture but I forgot about the one on the inside that now look at this that's also man man oh man all right and uh, let's see uh, the Moscow Circus will be at the Radio City Music Hall January 16th through the 27th is she back there when do we have time for this a little bit more of this all right good night everybody thank you very much so very very much and i mean that sincerely david how are you this evening i'm fine that's a lovely tie thank you, you have, very much sir. it's a brand new addition to the wardrobe do you it's enjoy gorgeous. it it's gorgeous yeah it's not your usual style what do you mean by that well you you'd usually go more subdued but this is a beautiful bold colors primary colors uh, thank you very much uh it's sort of nouvelle nouveau yeah, yeah would that's you say? It, exactly yeah it's mm -hmm. exactly thank you paul Looks thanks great. for pointing that out do we do we have any am i missing something out here excuse me one second let me check on this paul paul chat with the folks let me yeah. see yeah well uh it's do we, do been we have nice a little, uh, page so of, far oh my gosh, doing the this. show and we have uh, a little page of uh, items go? a little uh from i'm not sure a little, uh, but you know uh i've always felt that in an industry like ours it's so rare to okay paul that's it Back now? What back, was going right. on back then? Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you're here on a great night. It's time once again for another Hal Gurney Network Time Killer. Hal, our uh, director, Hal Gurney. Hi there. Hi there, Hal. It's me, Dave. How you doing? Hi, Dave. Yeah, Hi, Dave. what do you have for us tonight, Hal? Well, Dave, I hardly need to tell you that all, right. all of America is observing two big anniversaries this month. Huh? Is that right? That's right. Yeah. It's the 100th anniversary of Fig Newtons. Uh, show them the logo, would you? Oh, yeah, Fig Newtons. 100 yeah, right. years of yeah. goodness. Yeah, and it's also... I wonder how long they've been in business, though. <laughs> you know, 110, 120? Yeah. And, uh, Dave, it's also the 125th anniversary of the ASPCA. Oh, is that right? We've got a picture of that, too. Put it up. Yeah, there it is right okay, there. Okay, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, now, Hal, uh, let, let me ask you another question. Does tonight's yeah. Network Time Killer combine the aspects of these two anniversaries uh, into one something? You're right, Dave. All it right, does. Great. Tonight, nine dogs from the ASPCA right. will enjoy nine bowls of Fig Newtons. Oh, okay, my fellas, God. Here we go. Nine please. dogs eating nine bowls of Fig Newtons.
Boy, they can't seem to get enough of those Fig Newtons, can they? <laughs> Thank you very much, Hal. A lovely job. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on this program, man, look, look at all the names on the big program card. Morty, do we have time to get them all in? Yes, sir. Wait a minute, thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Penny. Uh, look, Susan Sarandon is here. Paul Carrick, Mike Rutherford from Mike and the Mechanics, eh? Yeah. Yeah? And uh, James Carey from In Living Color. And also, David Sanborn. Now... Now, uh, kids, do us a, a favor and say hello to our good friend, Paul Schaefer. He's right over there. Paul! Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So what was, uh, what was my intro again tonight? Do, do, do us a favor. What did say I say? Hello. I do said, us a big favor. Yeah, do us a big favor. Say, Say hello, hello to our good to friend, Paul Shaver. Director. Okay. Yeah. That's fine with me. I think it's a good <laughs> intro. Yeah, it is a good intro. It's interest. a nice intro. Yeah. How are you tonight? Oh, pretty good. Good. Usually you would sit down at this point. Is there some reason why, <laughs> why you're standing? I'm, I'm trying to decide what to do. I have here, I could do uh, one of two things. I'm thinking, should I do an impression now? Yes. I, I didn't know you felt that strongly about it. All right, it's a, uh, as you know, I'm not an impressionist uh, per se. I'm not like your big three. I'm not like um, Rich Little. You're I'm not, not like um, Frank Gorshin. You're not I'm, like I'm not like um, David, David, David Jansen. <laughs> Fugitive. Yeah. No, it. I'm not like it's. It, uh, I always forget the big three. It's Rich Little. It's Rich Little. Uh, uh, Frank Gorshin. Frank Gorshin and uh, 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 no, not Will Fred Jordan. Fred Fred huh? Fred Who is it? Fred Fred. Fred, yes. Fred Travelina. Fred yes. Travelina. Yes. <laughs> what do we have for this guy? So it's... But I do. I have a a small selection of custom impressions. <clears throat> Here now is my impression of uh, TV's Sally Jesse Raphael. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, TV Sally Jesse Raphael. Moderating one of her free-for-all controversial discussions. Okay. I watched it the other day. It was 100-year-old hookers was the category. <laughs> That's right. Here now, my impression of Sally Jesse Raphael. When things are really, really getting hot, they've really taken the gloves off and uh, the fur is flying. Sally Jesse Sally Raphael Jesse. goes something like this. <clears throat> People, one at a time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've dialed us up here on a good night. Hal, Hal, I understand you have something for us there in the control room. Ladies and gentlemen, our director, Hal Grunman. Uh, Hal Grunman. Come on in, Hal, and show us what you have there. It's a network time killer. Wow. Home of the tallest cameramen. What do you have for us tonight, Hal? Well, Dave, something really special. Uh -huh. Direct from Broadway's smash hit, right. the Will Rogers Follies. Oh, Did you good. see it? You saw it. Yeah. Uh, please welcome the best... Trick rope artist in the world. Oh, trick rope. Vince Bruce dissolved. Thank you very much, Al. Here we go, trick rope. <laughs> You'll never have to Heimlich his monkey. <laughs> Is he still going? Wow! You know, I, I used to do that. I had to stop because the rope burns you get are unbelievable. Believe <clears throat> Fortieth, fortieth year in uh, show business, Tony Bennett and... <laughs> Uh, Jimmy, JJ, Kid, Dynamite, Walker. Now, let's go over to our 
friend Paul Schiff, who's right over there. Hey, Paul. Hi, Mary. Nice much. to see you. I left you. my tie with Tony Bennett. It's a true story. And he better come out wearing it or I'm going to be really upset. I don't know what you're talking about. I had a tie on. Right. He said I need a tie. He right. came with an open collar. I gave him my tie. Right. I'm waiting to see if he comes. If he comes out with a, with a tie that suspiciously matches this shirt, you'll know. So you've loaned. Now this oh. I this love is my tie. <laughs> I love my tie to Tony Bennett. <laughs> I, uh, I had a little too much wine before the show. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, uh, Saturday here in New York City, I predicted it, it was going to be very hot, and I said that the temperature on Saturday would be 115. It was 111 wow. here in New York City. I was you very are cold. uncanny. Sunday, you... Sunday, I said the temperature here in the, the tri-state area would be 120. It was 121. <laughs> So I came very, very close. But the point is, uh, 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 this is how stupid I feel. All along, I'm telling people, I called my mom, I called my relatives, friends, everybody, neighbors. I'm trying to make everybody feel better about the, the, the god-awful heat. And I said, it's a hot spell. <laughs> and so Monday, I get to work, I pick up the, the paper. It turns out it's not a hot spell at all. It was a heat wave. So now I just feel... Crazy. But when it comes to predicting <laughs> temperatures... This is, this is how we begin this lame little thing every oh. night. Just, uh, Somehow, we get away with it. You know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's uh, time. You're here on a great night. Boy, if you had to pick one show to watch, tonight would be the, uh, the night to watch this one. You're, uh, you're here tonight on a good evening because it's time for another one of uh, Hal Gurney's uh, Network Time Killer. Hal, of course, is our uh, director. Hi, Dave. There's uh, Mr. Gurney. He's been Hi, our Dave. director. Hal's been with me for the last 35 years. Hal and That's I have right, been together. Dave. Hal, how you doing? Fine, Dave. Uh, Hal, if you can, in a word, sure. kind of give us an indication of the mood in the control room. Uh, pathetic, Dave. <laughs> oh, we're happy to be here. It's, it's <laughs> air-conditioned. Hal, that, that guy in the red jacket, is that a mannequin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's, yeah, he no, is, there is a pulse there. Right, okay, right, right. uh, uh, Hal, what do you have for us this evening by way of your time killer? Well, Dave, it's a guy who balances a tray on his head while performing a Moroccan dance. No! Yes, please welcome Michael Hurst. Here we go. Oh, the music. Oh, You know, I think what makes that, Paul, is the authentic Moroccan garb. <laughs> How about the authenticity of the dance itself? Exactly. Yeah. I was impressed by why, that. Why didn't, why didn't he loan Tony his tie? <laughs> that authentic should... Moroccan bow tie. Why didn't I loan him my tie? That you see out there on the desert so frequently whenever you are in Morocco, Moroccan a guy bow. on a camel yeah. with a bow tie. I'm serious. I'm serious. You about chipped a tooth, so just be careful with that damn camera, all right? Yeah. <laughs> hello, boys. Hi, Paul. How are you? David, hello. It's so nice to see you, nice sir. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm marvelous. Did you have a little traffic jam well, over here? Well, not only did I get my foot caught right under there, oh, thank the God camera. I'm, I'm wearing my steel-toed hosting shoes. Good thing, too. <laughs> but then, instead of backing off, the operator of camera number two there, I'm writing him up immediately following the show. <laughs> He, he banged that huge lens right into my... and nearly chipped a damn tooth. Man, that, that is... that is... Uh, I know you're covered for that. I hope you are. How'd you, how'd you do with Hurricane Bob, by the way? Uh, I survived it uh, very yeah. nicely. Where were you for the hurricane? Well, you know, this was, this was our second hurricane since I've been in Manhattan. We had one about six years ago. I forget one, what one that was. And, and fortunately, Hurricane Bob, I believe, hardly did much damage anywhere at all up and down the eastern seaboard. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of damage, rather, but I don't think much loss of life. I Thank see. God for that. But... The second there is a hint of a hurricane in, in my area, what I do now, and I learned the hard way, 
I take down my house. Take the whole thing down. I take it down, See I number that? each board, and I bury them. Yeah. I now, should... When I... they sound the all clear, I go back in with a team of volunteers and we... Put it back up. We <laughs> rebuild my house. Hey, let's do a little dial-in music, Paul. Could we have... Oh, by the way, have you seen... Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, man. I'm 44 years old, ladies and gentlemen. Here, take a look at this. This is the proudest achievement. <laughs> These people, they say, Dave, would you like to be on the cover of our magazine? And I say, well, I'm a little worried about the picture. <laughs> this, this was right before I slapped a makeup girl. Get, I, I said blush her, just blush her. Get. Now, I heard that there are, yeah, that's and right, that, I heard and now, about it. And now they say, well, geez, we, you know, we're not going to sell any magazines with that homely thing on the yeah. cover. So they say, let's put the big smiley one on. So now, there, look at this, that's much better. So I'm you mean there are... I'm full of sodium pentothal. Uh, you mean there are two different covers then? Yeah, the how wire? about that? This Kooky. month. Kooky, isn't it? It's like the Beatles used to release an album, and on the cover of one thing exactly. would be different, you know? Exactly, it's It would same. be Marilyn Monroe it's smiling, and that's the same so as So now, you. listen to this. So you get one of these for two and a half bucks. Now, that's yeah. a lot of magazine for two and a half bucks. Mm. So when they're trying to screw you here, they want you to double up, and you get them both for five. <laughs> that ain't much of a bargain, to my way of thinking. But two ah. lovely, lovely... F faces there to adorn well, your trophy room. Congratulations, though, on the cover. Let's uh, have some dialing music there, Paul. <laughs> I can't find it. Here it is. We're calling the GE Answer Center. We all work for General Electric, ladies and gentlemen. One of the great global corporate monsters of modern times. Okay, this should see, be somebody there at the uh, GE Answer Center. 24-hour day service. Do you have questions? Yeah, hello. Who is this? Who am I speaking to? Hi, Camilla. My name's Dave Letterman. I'm calling from New York City. Where are you? Louisville, Kentucky, can you, uh, can you talk on the show? Can we use your voice? Can you join us here in the proceedings? Okay, she said yes. She's going to join us on the telecast. Thank you. Camilla, how are you? I'm just fine. How are you doing? Uh, good. How long have you worked for General Electric? About 13 months. 13 months? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh, do you enjoy working for General Electric? I certainly do. Uh-huh. And do you, do you have a feeling uh, that you may grow old with this company? Well, uh, sometimes I think maybe so. Yeah, well, guess again. <laughs> you know otherwise? But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if, if, if for any reason, if for any reason the Grim Reaper comes down there and gets you, I want you to come to work for me. Oh, do you mean that? Yeah. And then, and then when the Grim Reaper comes after me, then we'll just spend the rest of our days traveling the world. Now, uh, Camilla, oh, how about Hurricane Bob? Did you do all right there? Uh, yeah, I think so. We didn't really get hit by it here. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Uh, how do you feel today? Uh, pretty good. Do you, do you get more uh, questions or complaints there on the answer line? Um, usually more questions. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. People are calling from all over the world? Uh, usually just the United States. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. What, what's the most rewarding part of your job? Uh, I guess talking to nice people uh -huh. around the country. Yeah, yeah. You hate it, don't you? It's driving you nuts. <laughs> You're putting the finishing touches on a suicide note, aren't you? Uh, okay, no, uh, Camilla, really. here we go. How do you feel? You ready? Uh-huh. You want to answer some questions for us? Okay. Okay, Pete, put up the big clock. Here we go. <laughs> All right, get ready. Uh, voltage in a standard electrical outlet. What is that? 115. Correct. No, I, oh, no, you're wrong. It's 120. What does VCR stand for? Video cassette recorder. That's right. True or false, GE microwave ovens give off deadly radiation. Oh. It's a joke, right? A toaster oven combines the features of what two appliances? An, an oven and a toaster. When your uh, GE clock radio goes off and you want to sleep an extra 10 minutes, what do you hit? The snooze. The snooze button. We could have accepted Dream Bar as well. 
Uh, from one to five, the toaster setting that makes toast pretty dark but not burnt. Uh, three. Oh, four. All right, one, one final question. How long does it take the GE 10-year light bulb last? How long does it last, the 10-year bulb? About 10 years. No, I'm sorry, it's four days. Thank you, Camilla. <laughs> Bye-bye. I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah, let's do that uh, time killer thing. We ready with that? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another Hal Gurney Network time killer. Uh, get ready for this. Sitting in tonight for Hal Gurney is uh, Pete Fatovich. Hi, Pete. How are you doing, buddy? Uh, come on. Hi, Dave. Good. How are things going there in the control room? Not bad, Dave. Yeah. Tonight, Dave, something... How was your summer, Pete? Oh, great. Fantastic. Great. Tonight, Dave, Big something... sale on windbreakers, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, get all you can. All the colors, all the sizes. Yes, blue. You can't go wrong with that. Red. Okay, white here we go. socks. Yeah, what do you have for us tonight? Tonight, Dave, something very special. The world's youngest professional yo-yoist. The world's oh. youngest professional yo-yoist. Yo yo-yoist. All right. All the way from Vermont, it's Jennifer Baybrook. Right. Uh, music... <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll do a commercial, and when we come back, Isabella Rossellini will be here, ladies and gentlemen. How are you, David? I'm good. Uh, I just want to make a little announcement here yeah. because they put it up over the weekend. They put up the big Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. It was a thousand feet high with, with two million uh, brightly colored lights and a, and a, and a billion balls, multicolored balls. It was up for the weekend and then they, they took it down. It's... <laughs> so if you're planning a trip to uh, New York to see the tree, don't forget it because it was, it was up for the weekend. And now it's been taken down. Okay. So, yeah, so don't come, don't come shopping for shoes and clog up the streets because it's a waste of time. Oh, yeah. There is, and there are trees in other parts of the country. You can go see trees, other parts of the world. You can celebrate the holiday in your own hometown. Okay. <laughs> you know, Paul, uh, you don't get to be as successful as we have been in television without being students of other television activity. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do this, I feel it's my responsibility to keep an eye on what's going on out there. And uh, last week, I was watching the, uh, the morning show with Regis Lee and Kathy Lee. Regis Lee. <laughs> Regis Lee and Kathy Lee. And Kathy Lee, that's mm -hmm. right. And they had a psychic on. And I thought, we should have a psychic on. We haven't had a psychic on in years, have we, Morty? Not in a long time. Yeah, not in a long time. Well, maybe we could get a psychic on because listen to this. Listen, here's what happened. Regis is there with a the psychic, and she is going to just at random talk to people in the audience. So, so a, a woman stands up, and the psychic uh, kind of does this. And maybe there's a trance or two, just a little, you know, maybe a little, just maybe. Yeah. You, you either hear that or you think you hear it. You're not. So she's. So, so she says to the woman, she says, is there a member of your family? Uh, whose name begins with A, and the woman says, No. So the psychic says, Is there a member of your family whose name begins with the letter B? And the woman says, No. <laughs> all right. To make a long story short, I know that may not be possible at this point, but they get, they get all the way to E, and the psychic says, is, is there a member of your family whose name begins with the letter E? And she says, uh, Ernie. So, so now, now we got something. We work our way down to E, so psychically, boom, right there, we got Ernie. So she says, now, now what to tell me about the relationship between you and Ernie? And she says, uh, Ernie is my boy, he's my son. And she says, oh, great. And she goes in another trance and she says, uh, have you recently purchased a gift for Ernie? 
and, and the woman says, yes, we bought Ernie a bicycle. Now, the psychic beads of sweat are on her forehead. <laughs> and she's really, she's deep into this trance and she says, all right, I'm getting something. If Ernie takes the bicycle out into the street, have him be very careful. <laughs> and the audience goes nuts! I almost didn't come into work that day. I was, I was limp from exhaustion and, and <laughs> frankly, excitement as well. Uh, this past uh, weekend here in uh, New York City, you know, we, uh, we had the big marathon. What, what marathon was it? Like the 50th, the 40th, the, the 100 and the 100? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think Lincoln ran in the first one, didn't he, Bob? <laughs> the 100. Is it? What was it? I thought it was the 23rd. 23rd sounds about right to me. Uh, and we had uh, various staff members running in the, in the marathon. We, of course, had uh, uh, Rob Burnett, one of our writers, running in his second. Uh, Mary Connolly, uh, she was running in her second. And uh, my own assistant, the lovely uh, Rose Diamond, running in her first. Now, if you kids don't mind, we have videotape. And, now, this was, this was at mile 23. And, and if you see people who have been running for 23 miles, you'd expect them like they've been dragged by a station wagon or something. They would look like that. Look at this. Here, at first, this would be Rob. And see how, look at this. This is 23 miles. He has the strength to wave and do that thing with his thumb. Uh, there's Mary Connolly, and she's just working the crowd and asking, what the hell is she doing there, but waving. I think that's, and here's uh, Rose, my assistant. Look at that. Uh, Mile, mile 23, she needs a cigarette, is what she said. <laughs> I need a butt! Uh, and then nearly knocked to the ground by a husky idler there. We... <laughs> Passing out bananas. Uh, anyway, uh, Rob uh, ran in 4 hours, 21 minutes, 53 seconds. I'm very impressed by this. Mary Connolly, uh, 4 hours, 29 minutes, and 39 seconds. And uh, uh, our friend uh, Rose here, 5 hours... 14 minutes and two seconds. Very, very, very. I, think, I think that's mighty impressive. Sid, when you were running, you ran four before. I, I ran the last what, four. What was your best time? Uh, 314. 314. Wow. So you're... I'm having no trouble walking down steps today. Yeah. They are. But now, did you look that good at mile 23? I mean, no. these people... No. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure you guys ran? This wasn't one of those Rosie Ruiz deals, was it? <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you, the first 10 miles in a cab were a nightmare. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, it was a joke, Madeline. I didn't even know it was you. Was it you, Madeline? No, no. Husky Idler, meaning in the most positive sense. Husky. <laughs> no, husky. no, like, like, no, no, like, a, like, no, I didn't mean that. It's just a figure of speech. No. <laughs> No, I know it was. I, I chose the wrong words. I think it was the the lens on the camera did. I'm sorry. It was. You're not, Madeline. Now don't cry. We have a show to do. Just uh, leave the room, please. I thought Madeline had gone home. I meant. I meant. I. I the emphasis should have been more on idle than husky. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. You're not, she's not husky. Just tell her she's not husky. Okay. All right. <laughs> hey, Hal, are you in there? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you couldn't have selected a, a finer evening for your viewing enjoyment tonight because uh, it's time for another Hal Gurney Network Time Killer. Hal, what are you... <laughs> Hey, Hal, did you yeah. see Madeline? Uh, did she leave? No, nah, she's really, really, you know, very angry. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Madeline, come back. Madeline, it's all right. Come back. Yeah. Hal, what do you have for us tonight on the big time killer? Well, Dave, uh, I don't have to tell you that the Moscow Circus is in town until December 5th at the Gershwin Theater. Oh, God bless you, Hal Gertie. I know. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, tonight we have, let me get this right now, Genode E. Cheats off <laughs> and his white rat Rhea in something they call Ratango. Okay, here Jerry? we go. Something they call Ratango. Come on.
I, I, don't, I don't know this for a fact, but I have a feeling that's the kind of thing you, you learn in prison. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not certain of that. Hey, look, it's our old friend Madeline Smithberg. <laughs> well, we'll do a, a commercial, and we'll be right back here with uh, Dave Osborne. Thanks, Madeline. Thanks. Let's see, what is uh, Jacques Cousteau cooking tonight? Huh? All right. And, and well, this is a, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heartwarming and sad and kind of make you feel good sort of dog pet story. Uh, and that'll be later on the show. That's all I can tell you right now. But it's a, it, first of all, the story starts out and you think it's a sad story. And then a little bit later as the story unfolds, you realize it's a happy story. <laughs> That's what we have on the show for you a little later. Not right now, but a little later. Now, here's our friend, Paul Shaver. Hey, right, Paul. Thank you. That's good for you to say. Thank you very much. My, look. Thank you, Dave. Very quickly, Will and I have come up with a song, the Simi Valley song. Are you interested? Oh, yeah, Simi Valley song. Here, Here we go. This is it. Simi! <laughs> That's it. Yeah! What is, what is the deal with these shirts, though? Am I getting, like, factory seconds or something? Ah, uh, there's this funny there, There's nothing thing more annoying on. than spending the night looking like this. This is, this is, this, this is like... This is every General Electric executive after about a half an hour in Hurley's. This is... This is that thing going all night. Hi, how are you? I told him, I said, hey, you fire, you fire my ass if you want. I ain't doing it. That's what I told him. I was in a, uh, a little place over the weekend buying uh, pizza. I guess it was a little pizza place. <laughs> and I looked there on the other side of the counter. It's a very unusual sign. I have never seen this sign as long as I've been buying pizza. It was a hand-lettered sign, and it says, The management reserves the right to evaluate large orders. <laughs> and so I, I said to the guy, I said, uh, I, said well, I, I don't know that this applies to me, but say, say I come in here and I order six pizzas... And somebody on your staff might say, oh, that's a pretty big order. <laughs> that's your right. Is that what the sign is saying? Yeah, that's it. That's it right there. That's right. <laughs> to evaluate the size of the order. Yeah, we reserve the right to evaluate, evaluate. all large orders. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of pizza. That's their right. <laughs> they have, they have the they right have to the say right that. To do that. That's yeah. right. Uh, the only good news I received today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm finally over my two week cold. Thank you very much. It's starting. Maybe some double face tape and a staple gun. Um, and I was thinking, I, uh, I believe everybody I know now has a cold, and everybody you talk to has their own way to handle it. They have their own remedy of, of how to deal with a cold. Because now, as you know, we're right in the middle, actually, right in the beginning of the cold and flu season. Uh, and I don't really mind the cold and flu season because I can pretend all the coughing coming from the audience is actually laughter. So I, it doesn't bother me. Paul, do you have a little tip to get through the cold and flu season? Tip, yes, I do. You know, there's only one sure cure for the flu, and you can learn all about it right here in this book, Final Exit. Well, that's very cute. Don't forget to leave a note. Anton. When I've got a cold, there's only one remedy I trust. This strange glowing mixture of unknown chemicals given to me by a complete stranger. Morty. You know, when the cold and flu season arrives, I finally have a legitimate excuse for wearing my long, flowing scarf. Andrea the supermodel? Yeah! Yeah! Sorry. Toda vez que eu acho que estou pegando uma gripe, eu só tenho que me lembrar que eu sou uma modelo fabulosa, super famosa, invejada por milhões de pessoas, e como não passo de mágica, eu fico curada dele. 
I welcome the flu because it means I can look forward to frequent feverish dreams of the beautiful Buick Skylark, the official car of the PGA, and the automobile of choice for discriminating drivers everywhere. Biff? When I feel I've got a bug of some kind, I make myself a sandwich of mayonnaise and St. Joseph chewable aspirin for children. Good eating and good for you. Almar? When I have the flu, I just take out my Black & Decker and drill a couple of holes in my head. All I know is it works for me. Rose? I just think lots of happy thoughts and my flu symptoms disappear in a jiffy. I've made a huge mistake, Paul. If you're scoring at home, I've made my first... What's the matter now? Oh, yeah, get over here. Yeah, staple it right to my collarbone. Do that. Right in there to my clavicle. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you know what I did? The mistake what? I did, we were supposed to do this uh, network time killer first, and then we were going to do the cold and flu symptoms. I've screwed up the whole show. Oh, you went right Please, to the Please, ladies and gentlemen, can you find it in your hearts to forgive me? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Hal... It's time for another Hal Gurney Network uh, time killer. Hal, what do you have for us tonight? What's... Hal, what's... Everything's gone haywire. Hi, Hal. Hey, I'm sorry. Dave. I, I hope I didn't screw you up too badly. Oh, no, not at all, Dave. I got it all out of Actually, order, that, you know. That was a pretty good piece, so we enjoyed that in here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, Dave. you're the one. Dave, here's what it says on the card. What all of America is in for quite a treat tonight, Dave. Yeah. From the Big Apple Circus... It's the Rios Brothers. Take it away, boys. Is Here we one. go, the Rios Brothers. I done that first, and then we done the the little things. Everybody would have been a, been a much better mood. I don't know. I liked it this way. Oh, you did. Yeah. Oh, good. You All right. Flip. I, I'm taking that as a vote of confidence. Let's uh, let's do a commercial, and uh, when we return, ladies and gentlemen, Jacques Cousteau will be on the program. special Thanksgiving night uh, telecast. Do you think you'll be at home tonight uh, watching the show? Will you stay up this late to see the program? I think so. Yeah. Are you sure? Is there any way we can check that? Maybe. Mm. Uh, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. Are the Blackhearts here, Paul, or are yes. the Blackhearts not here? Blackhearts are here, sir. Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. Joan Jett. How many Blackhearts does she have? She's got, uh, well, she's got three Blackhearts right, with three her. Black hearts. Okay, good. Joan Jett and the Black Arts, the amazing Kreskin will be out here a little bit later. And I understand he's going to make stuff float through the air. He's going to make stuff fly. You're going to be seeing the flying lizards and stuff screaming through the air as a spe... You don't care, do you? zippity doo da -da, zippity a <laughs> You ever have one of those days where nothing works, just nothing, nothing at all works? Well, no, everything works for kids, doesn't it, pretty well, much? kind of. Yeah, kind of. Uh, Julie Brown will be on the program tomorrow. Southside Johnny will be here from the uh, Canadian Football League wide receiver Rahib, although I'm told it's Rajib Ismail. The Rocket Ismail. Oh, right. Toronto, yeah. yeah. Right. Toronto Argonaut. And a science uh, demonstration with Carol Gold. <laughs> That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so glad you could be with us tonight for this holiday broadcast. We have something special for you again. Hal, 
Oh, Hal Gurney is our director, Hal Gurney. It's time for Hal Gurney's Family Treat. Hal, what do you have for us tonight? Hi, Dave. Hi, Hal. Yeah, tonight, well, tonight it's something very special. A woman who keeps dozens of hula hoops spinning, Dave. Uh -huh. And here from the Big Apple Circus, Donna Kasieva. Oh, God Go bless ahead, you, Hal Donna. Gurney. Hello. Hello. So, so now you'll be staying up for sure, won't you? Uh, we're going to pause when we come back, ladies and gentlemen. The Amazing Kreskin.